Now I'm going to hand tap. This is not a power operation. And uh, uh, one thing, I do love my Albrecht chucks, but they are quite long this way and compared to a, a, a little Jacob. So, you know, I have to drop the table even further, which is always a, a pain in the neck. And I do have a little bit of a center in there, and I've uh, avoided using uh, this spring-loaded center, which I like better because that's a half-inch shank, then I would have to change uh, chucks. So, you know, one thing leads to another, but I'm, I'm just following the tap, my hands on the quill feed, and uh, tap until I feel it hit the bottom. And I'll finish that off camera. I racked my brain for over 10 minutes trying to figure this out, but uh, I've got the elbow in that mandrel again. And if I can support this in a parallel position, then I'm assured that I got a right angle here. So I built this up with parallels. Uh, there's a one, two, three block and an inch and a quarter parallels. And uh, th this seems to be holding at just the right height so I can grip it there. I know she's kind of wobbly now, but so I can grip it. But then the other question is, looking at it uh, from the other direction, am I going to get it straight or be tilted just slightly? So I will wrestle with that a little bit. And I think I can get it. A lot of this is eyeballing. You know, you can buy these pre-machined uh, pre and pre-threaded, ready to, to go, and uh, I suppose they have a fixture to hold this at the factory so this can can be a bit aggravating and then uh, when you see the price on them all machined and ready to go you might say hey that's fairly cheap if you haven't watched my video on how to make this crank adapter uh, for a Bridgeport mill and this would allow you to to raise and lower your table uh, by holding this in an electric drill and take the the crank off and zip it up and down so watch how I make that if you haven't already seen that two-part video now I have center drilled that and uh, the drill bits in there and I'm ready to drill it down to the depth and I could feel that break into the cross hole quite nicely. Now I'm ready to tap it the same way I did the other side, but of course I won't show that because it's uh, duplication, redundant if you will. And there it is. It appears to be virtually perfect as far as the right angle is concerned. Well, let me take this out of there. That's been tightened. And I can see the cross hole, so I know it went through and there should be full flow of whatever's going to flow. There it is on a Franklin dime FDR. My dad called him RFD. Franklin Felonor Duzevelt, he always said. Looks pretty good. All right, we've done two fittings. Now perhaps I will tackle the T. And thinking about it, I'd like to see if I could do it in the lathe. I don't know. No, maybe I can't hold it, but I would like to drill all the way through this way. And then cross ways. I don't intend to do the cross. I'm just going to do the T and maybe a 45 if the spirit moves me. I've had a change of heart here, and I'm holding the, uh, the T in a four-jaw chuck. Now, I had this in the lathe, but I took it out so I could show you. And I would much have preferred to hold it in this uh, rather nice, newly acquired uh, four-jaw chuck that I got with that uh, other lathe the last winter. But, that doesn't have the right size uh, hole in it. And you know this? This one doesn't have a backing plate either. So it's not going to be easy to adapt. Matter of fact, it's a three-quarter, sixteen thread it appears to be. I must have put that on there. So it was a little awkward holding it in a bigger one like this or, or making the adjustments but but I but I did and then I 
I just pecked it with the center drill as you can see it's almost too bright to see that and now I'm going to put it back on the lathe and center drill it again a little deeper and then drill all the way through and I will tap one side of it and then hold it in that little arbor I think to tap the other side that's the game plan thankfully that hole came out pretty much on the center and now I'm back to holding it in that uh, little mandrel or arbor I put the three jaw chuck back on and I'm going to hold it like this for drilling or rather tapping that hole so then I've got two out of three completed this is a long video a little longer than I thought it would be now I'll take a look at how I'm going to drill and tap the third hole holding it again in that little arbor and using the same uh, Rube Goldberg set up here with a one two three block and then I had to change the parallel this is only a one inch parallel but the work the rod setting on there and then tightening it up like that my own hands are in the way and that should hold at both parallels such as this, this hole will be perpendicular and then uh, also uh, held such that it won't be twisted now again uh, finding the actual center of this is going to be bagas bagash uh, uh, eyeballing uh, just uh, just good judgment and uh, uh, I'm wearing this and I use a flashlight and I will attempt to find the very center and then I'll go ahead and drill that with the same size drill until I drill right through the cross hole and I'll feel that as I come through and then tap it as I did before I'm still working on the T now and I have drilled it and now I'm tapping it the same as I did the other uh, fittings now if you're new to modeling the reason I'm doing this on a milling machine and taking such care is that if you try to do this freehand just in a drill press or in a bench vise especially as a beginner there's just so much chance for error and spoiling a piece and I'm going down again to the mark on my tap so I'm at, at the right depth and then uh, this piece is done I think I know I'm giving a lot of related information in this uh, video and that's going to make it long but bear with me because uh, well, this kind of information where, where else are you going to pick this up if you're a novice if you're new at it uh, now some of you guys this, this is pretty obvious but uh, a way of holding this little chuck with the wrong size here is to hold it in any one of my lathes in a three jaw chuck or for that matter a four but it would be so much easier with a three with the reversed jaws and it, it would be held like that tightened up and then uh, your work held in the four jaw chuck and adjusted uh, whatever way you wanted but I think what I'll probably do with this cute little chuck and that is a cute one and it is a I think it's a craftsman yeah this is made in England doesn't say craftsman but I believe it came on a Sears lathe so uh, I will make a very accurate arbor that'll fit that three-quarter sixteen and that arbor can be held either in a three jaw chuck or in a collet and in fact it probably doesn't have to be that accurate as long as this thing doesn't wobble but it doesn't matter if it runs true because I'm going to bring the work true or wherever I want it with the with the four jaws in this chuck so alright that's free information for whatever it's worth on with the show back to the little T and in fact it is done you know on this one I never did uh, face or machine any of these uh, three surfaces those were just uh, belt sanded 
And, in fact, it doesn't matter, but I, I could go back and do that if I wanted. But that's done. Now, I, I wasn't going to carry this any farther, but I believe that I will go ahead and uh, machine the 45 degree L. Just a little bit different uh, procedure than the 90 degree, although not a whole lot. A lot of similarities, but a few differences. And I'm going to leave that stub on there. And I did that on purpose when I cut it from the tree or the stick. I call these a tree, but some people say this is a stick of casting. So I don't know which is correct. Maybe both. This is the 45 degree L. And uh, I know you, you can only see the top of it here. But it's held on a little uh, 45 degree angle uh, gauge that I made. And I'll show you that in a minute. But I got a little bit ahead of myself here. To assure that it's at 45 degrees. And I've already milled off just a little bit off the top. Found the center. And I'm ready to center drill right now. And now I will drill it this size, but I have to uh, probably drill not quite as deep as what I usually drill, or I might go through the side wall of the casting. And then I'll go ahead and tap it in here, and I'm not going to show that. But uh, then I'll bring it over to the bench and show you how I'm going to do the second side. Alrighty, here's how I did the 45 degree L, and I'm still only halfway done, but I have uh, drilled and tapped and got it tightly on uh, the rod. Now I'm going to saw it off and drill from this side. But, how did I hold that? You know, every shop has uh, 45 degree squares. You know, there's a combination square, another 45er from England. And I thought, well, I need something real thin, though. It's thinner than the castings. So I was just going to use a drafting 45, but that didn't lend itself too well either because of the little uh, rim right here. So finally I made out of aluminium and it only took three or four minutes to make this. I just laid it out off, you know, off of another 45. But that little notch there is, uh, well, I'm wrong, the wrong way, Corrigan. Yeah, it goes in like that. And the height of this is just exactly the height of the vise. So it basically went like that, but it was most awkward trying to get that down into the vise, you know, because there was no room to get my fingers in there. But I did manage, but that's how I did it, and perhaps you have a better way, or uh, it probably would have worked better if I would have used a, a, a tilting vise, 45 degree device, a vise, or something like that. But all right, uh, now I will saw that off and continue. Again, this is the 45 degree L, and I'm using that same little uh, 45 degree angle guide that I made. And I'm sorry to say, and kind of ashamed, I had to use some black tape to even hold on to that. But I've already got it positioned, tightened, and uh, tentatively centered, and ready to center drill. grab the tool a little bit. Okay, the 45er is done, I think. And if I hold a 45 on here like this and a, a 90 like this, you can see it looks pretty good. Let me take the rod out of there now. That's That was tightened in there so that it wouldn't uh, get away on me because, again, that's part of the aligning system and I could feel the drill meet the other hole that's as far as I'm going to take it because uh, what you see on here yet that I haven't done is the cross and then the others are duplicates so I'm not going to do those and I'm sure on the model catalogs you can buy tubing or tiny brass pipe or whatever that will fit right in those or make your own but 
Now remember when you're working on models some of this work is very tedious and it's don't get in a hurry to get it done because if you're in a hurry then you're you're in the wrong hobby because some of these models might take uh, six months or a year and some guys work for years and years on a model steam engine so if you're impatient uh, no because I spent really the better part of a day doing what I'm showing you here but of course I had to take time to uh, set the camera and do all that kind of thing and, and eat lunch and uh, and speaking of lunch if you hear some noise upstairs it's my granddaughter with some friends over and they're all homeschooled but they came over to bake bread and boy does that smell good but we have here again a 45 let's just review you can see how small these are the coupling the 45 the 90 and a T. So I hope you enjoyed this two-part video and uh, the contributions made by Dave who gave me the taps and uh, the other man who gave me the casting so appreciate their help and uh, be sure and watch my other videos and this is Tubal Kane saying so long for now.